Hello there, fellow space ranchers, and welcome back to some more obscure Battletech lore. Today we arrive at another of the Inner Sphere major powers, namely the Capellans, and we get to explore their unique fauna and biodiversity. And for once in their existence, the Capellans might be the first at something. In this case, the number of animals we're gonna learn about today, which is not 6 or 7 or 8 as the other episodes, but no less than 10. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let the Animal Planet program begin. The first of today's animals is the Drosan Whitefish, or Exocoregonus Oceanis Drosanus. The world of Drosan has long been recognized as the breadbasket of the Victoria commonality, and often the confederation as a whole based predominantly on the strength of their aquaculture. Shrimp farms, kelp farms and saltwater game fisheries all contribute much to the planetary output. But none of these come even close to the sheer numbers of whitefish bred and processed in the coastal fisheries. Ubiquitous in the oceans of Drosan, the whitefish seems almost tailor-made for breeding in captivity. Hatched from eggs that are laid out in their thousands, a whitefish grows to maturity in just six weeks. At that point they begin to reproduce, with each fish capable of hatching a brood of offspring every six months. This growth rate, when discovered, shocked early biologists, because at that rate the whitefish should have overpopulated and eaten the oceans of Drosan centuries earlier. Susceptibility to pollution in the ocean, in particular to a toxin released in the water by the native reefs, keeps their numbers down though. On the other hand, in captivity, with the toxin non-existent, their reproduction is unstoppable. Their preferred environment is cold water ocean, their coloring is mottled silver, and they can reach a length of up to 1 meter. Our second of today's beasties is called the Bifinian Dirt Grinder or the Vermicula torturus bifinialis. Some of the early inhabitants on the world of Bithynia were surprised when their fields were ravaged by a local underground dweller, and all attempts to restrict its movements would fail. Nicknamed the Dirt Grinder, the creature is essentially a bigger, more robust version of the Terran earthworm. Like its Terran cousin, the Dirt Grinder spends a lot of its time burrowing in the ground, only surfacing for water and sustenance. Its secretions form natural stiffeners in the Bifinian soil, and its digestive tract can dissolve to trace compounds nearly a meter of dirt per hour. In addition, its slit mouth contains a sizable number of herbivore-style grinding teeth for disposing of small rocks, as the dirt grinder's teeth are all nearly diamond hard. There is even a specialty market for dirt grinder teeth, but their poor quality makes them useful only as souvenirs. Attempts to harvest the teeth to turn them into jewelry have failed, as few people want to actually wear the teeth of worms at the end of the day. Their preferred environment is subterranean arid areas, its coloring is gray, it can reach a length of up to 2 meters, a diameter of 20 centimeters, and they can weigh up to 7 kilos. The third of today's beasties is the Gypher Paki or the Pachydermata gypheri. The world of Gypher is best known for the Capellan Institute for Linguistics and the libraries of the Capellan Republic, which draw high numbers of scholarly people year-round. The visitors contribute much to the enlightenment of the confederation, but they also have to eat, and it has long been a truism since humans even left Terra that those who spend their days thinking often know little about practical matters like growing food. Fortunately, Gypher also boasts a large number of tenant farms on its fertile western continent, operated by local servants, and many of them use the packies for much of the work. Roughly the size of a Terran ox, the Gypher Paki looks like a small elephant, with leathery brown skin that is relatively hairless. They are docile creatures, difficult to anger, and display little of their Terran cousin's famous stubbornness. Many farmers keep at least a pair of them for use in all kinds of semi-heavy agriculture. They pull plows, push mill wheels and drag carts. That such primitive farming techniques exist on a planet famous for a repository of knowledge is an intentional anachronism. 
Lord Wellington, the ruler of the planet, is a noted environmentalist and promotes organic farming. The Paki's favorite environment is temperate grassland, its coloring is brown, it has a length of up to 3.2 meters, a height of 2.4 meters, and it can weigh up to 2 tons. The next of today's animals is a bit more scary. It is the Grand Base Great Crocodile, or the Crocodilus Tyrannus Basis. The world of Grand Base is famous as the homeworld of the Death Commandos and a premier battle mech construction facility. However, the commandos are not the only predators here. In the 6,000 km long Parung River in the Southern Hemisphere, the Great Crocodile is the undisputed master of the ecosystem. Growing to lengths of more than 5 meters and weighing half a ton, this Great Croc is a mighty reptile. Its preferred food is the large herbivores that inhabit the forest. It strikes from ambush in the water when they come near the river to feed. However, unlike the Terran crocodiles, this one cannot travel on land, as instead of clawed feet, it retains the flippers of a water animal. It is utterly fearless though, and most river transports carry heavy weapons to deal with them if attacked. There is also rumors about a secret death commando ritual in which a single commando sets out to hunt a great croc, but this story was never proven. The skin of a great croc is tough enough to turn the point of any weapon less powerful than a vibroblade. And while the Death Commandos are powerful warriors, they do not have a reputation for stupidity. This croc prefers tropical rivers, it is pale grey in color, it can reach a length of up to 5.5 meters, a diameter of 2.2 meters, and they can weigh up to half a ton. The next animal is the Kaifeng Tree Sloth or the Bradipus kaifengis. The kaifeng tree sloth lives in the trees across most of the planet's equatorial belt. They are mostly harmless creatures that ignore humans, although some of the kaifeng nobility prize them as pets for their stature. They are incredibly difficult to keep alive in captivity, and none have ever been observed breeding, leading to rumors that the creatures are very long-lived. The tree sloths are omnivores, they eat fruit and berries from the trees, but also insects and the occasional small kaifeng peckbird. They have six limbs, four of which they mainly use for hanging from a tree branch, and two more delicate arms close to their heads that they use to find and grab food. Their preferred sustenance is the red-white cabo berry, but they are also known to eat leaves out of the mando tree in large quantities. When in captivity, they are held in enclosed arboretums, recreated to look like the forest outside. The nobility of Sheng go to great expense to keep their enclosures as natural as possible, sending regular expeditions into the forest to capture food for them and retrieve fresh insects and plant specimens. Their preferred environment is the jungle, they are pale brown in color, their height is up to 40 centimeters, their length is up to 1.5 meters, and they can weigh as much as 4 kilos. The sixth of today's animals is the Liao Buffalo, or the Bison Sinfenii. The Liao Buffalo is a large food animal found across the plains of the planet Liao. It is one of the few native animals whose meat is digestible to a human, as the settlers quickly discovered when the world was still called Sinfiana. Nowadays, the Liao Buffalo is considered a delicacy on some planets, and it is exported across the Liao commonality even as far away as Cyan. The animal itself, strangely, is a reptile, despite being big and covered in brown fur, which is why the first settlers called it a buffalo. They are cold-blooded creatures, ranging across Liao's broad plains in vast herds which gather to conserve warmth in the evening and soak up the day's sun. They have few natural predators. A native cougar was hunted to extinction in the first century of Liao's colonization, and they have become a staple of rural life on Liao. They are docile animals, slow to anger and quick to domesticate. Many families subsist on a small herd of their own. As long as enough buffaloes are present to survive the cold nights or have heated shelter, they need nothing more than grassland and abundant food and the Liao grasses definitely grow fast enough to replenish their food supply. 
Their preferred environment is arid plains, their coloring is brown, their height is up to 1.7 meters, their length is up to 3 meters, and they can weigh as much as 2 tons. The next of today's animals is another predator, known as the repulse lynx, or the lynx repulsii. The Astrid Mountains on the planet of Repulse are home to one of the wiliest and deadliest predators in the entire confederation. This is the Repulse Lynx. Roughly the size of their Terran counterparts, this thing has six legs instead of four, all of them ending up in razor-sharp claws. It is as fast on open ground as a Terran cheetah, and it is comfortable in the trees like a panther. It is usually found in the snow line in the Astrids. Unlike many other native repulse animals, they do not hibernate during the six-month repulse winter. Their main prey is the large, clumsy animal known as the Neo-Ox, but this lynx has also become a feared manhunter. Even though it cannot digest human flesh, it will still track a mountain party, sometimes for days on end, and pick off the stragglers when no one is looking. A common story tells of a lynx called Nelson, who stalked a party of mountaineers for 13 days every day picking up another climber without being seen. Might as well call it Batman, not Nelson. Their preferred environment is tundra and temperate regions, their coloring is white or pale cream, their length is up to 1.2 meters, their height is up to 1 meter, and they can weigh as much as 30 kilos. Moving on, we have arguably the funniest of today's creatures, but also one of the most dangerous. It is called the Sarmaxan Squirrel, or the Siurus Mutatus Sarmaxis. During one of the many bombardments of the Succession Wars, a nuclear weapon was detonated over the city of St. Bartholomew on Sarmaxa. Most of the residents survived in shelters, but many parks and zoos were struck full force by the explosion and most of the animals were killed. One small animal, however, would thrive, and this is the Sarmaxan Squirrel. Over the centuries of Sarmaxa's colonization, the squirrel adapted to life in the cities that the colonists built, becoming as ubiquitous on Sarmaxa as the rat on Terra. When St. Bartholomew was destroyed, most of the squirrels were exposed to radiation and died, but some survivors underwent mutation. And before long, in true comic book fashion, they became the scourge of the streets for reclamation crews and treasure hunters. This mutated squirrel is an aggressive rodent, often striking at packs and destroying insulation in new buildings. It seems unable to resist the taste of particulate insulation even though it is toxic to them, and many are found whenever the construction is ongoing, having gorged themselves to death. These mutated squirrels are in fact so aggressive that they will attack anyone who stumbles upon them when feeding, and their bites often cause symptoms similar to Terran rabies. Their preferred environment is urban, their coloring is deep gray with white, they can reach a length of up to 30 centimeters, with a height of up to 16 centimeters. As we're getting close to the end, we arrive at our ninth animal of today. This is the Turin Beef Bull, or the Bos Taurus Turin. The Turin bull, or beef bull, was one of the first alien animals found that could mate with Terran animal stock, and the newly created crossbreed animal quickly became a food staple across several planets close to Turin. The thick and hearty meat is normally prepared in a way similar to Terran beef, although Turin meat is green rather than red. This often confuses tourists or visitors who have never eaten Turin meat as the shade of beef bull meat at its most delicate mimics the color of rancid regular meat. Currently, Turin is the site of exciting new research as scientists labor to make the milk of the Turin cow, which is indigestible to humans, into something acceptable if not palatable. Initial successes by Starlink-sponsored researchers have brought new investments from nobility all across Turin, including Turin's own Lama von Avon. Adding a dairy component to Turin's already bustling meat industry would make the world an even bigger economic powerhouse. This animal prefers arid plains, its color is brown, it can reach a length of up to 3.4 meters, a height of 1.5 meters, and it can weigh as much as 2 tons. 
Our last creature of today is known simply as the Warbird, or the Accipiter Warlocus. The cold, dry mountains of the world of Warlock are the playground of the huge raptor called the Warlock Warbird. With wingspans as big as 2 meters, they are fierce and very territorial, claiming swathes of the mountain passes as their own. They feed exclusively on a small rodent known as the Warlock Mountain Otter, which lives in the snows and the ice. The truly remarkable thing about their ecosystem is that neither of these two species is native to Warlock. Both were introduced at some point in the past, six centuries ago, and they have thrived, and yet no one has identified their planet of origin. The mountain otter is a small, furred creature, subsisting on the various lichens growing among Warlock's glacial rock formations. It reaches at just under one meter in length, with light brown fur, four small padded feet, and a long fibrous tongue for scraping the lichens from rock walls. Genetic testing shows that the otter comes from the same planet as the warbird, but all attempts to identify that world have failed. The warbird prefers an arctic mountain climate, its coloring is white or dark gray, its wingspan is up to 2 meters, it can have a height of 35 centimeters, and it weighs up to 12 kilos. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about all these animals from the Capellan Confederation for today. A lot of animals explored today for yet another dose of Space Animal Planet. Personally, I found the six-legged repulse lynx to be the most interesting. As always though, I more than look forward to reading your thoughts on all these creatures. Which one did you like the most and why? Let us all know in the comments. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, do consider supporting the series by watching to the end, liking, sharing, commenting, and clicking the bell icon for future content. I'll also be making at least one more of these for animals in the periphery, so do stay tuned for that. Thanks a lot for watching to the end, and have a healthy and awesome day.